Hello everyone, it's Stella and Tarrant here from Meeple University. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Archeos Society, a game designed by Paolo Mori and published by Space Cowboys. Let's get to the game! In Archeos Society, players are teams of explorers going out in search of the wonders of the world. It's a set collection game with a twist, as players draw cards from the supply to try to put together the best teams of explorers they can. Play a set and you'll score points for its size, its role and its colour. But all the remaining cards in your hand go on the table for other players to take. A round ends once the three golden monkeys have been found and over several rounds of play, whoever scores the most points will win the game. To set up, assemble the game deck by choosing any six of the 12 sub-decks that are available with the game. By default, each sub-deck has 12 copies of the same role or icon, with two each in six different colours. Shuffle all the cards into a single deck. Set up the six location boards. Each corresponds to one of those same six colours that we saw on the cards. Each board has a basic side and an advanced side which shows an icon in its top left corner. And you can use any combination of basic and advanced sides. Each player chooses a colour, takes its components and then places one of their vehicle markers on the leftmost space of each track. Place all score markers at zero. Among the remaining components you'll always need the three monkey cards, so set them aside. All remaining components, including your leftover player vehicles, may or may not be used depending on which of the 12 roll cards you chose for the game. Any that you don't need are returned to the box and we'll explain exactly how each of them works in a later section of the video. Choose a first player and you're now ready to play. Archeos Society is played in a number of rounds or seasons, each of which roughly corresponds to one run through the deck of cards. You will play two seasons in a two or three player game, or three seasons in a four, five or six player game. To set up for a season, shuffle the deck, deal one card face down into each player's hand, and deal a number of cards face up equal to two more than the number of players. Split the rest of the deck into roughly two halves. Shuffle the three golden monkey cards into the lower half of the deck. Then put the other half back on top. The season will end once all three of those monkey cards have been drawn, so you won't know exactly when the end is coming. Now play the season. A season is played in turns, starting from the first player and going clockwise around the table. On your turn you must take one of two possible actions. Either take a card, or play a set. When you take a card, you have two options. You may either take any face-up card from the display, adding it to your hand without replenishing it, or you can draw the top face-down card from the deck. If there are no cards remaining in the face-up supply, then your only option is to draw from the deck, but you get to draw two cards instead of one. If you ever draw one of the monkey cards from the deck, you must reveal it, discard it, and then draw again. This applies any time a monkey card is drawn, whether it's for this action or any other reason. Finally, you have a hand limit of 10 cards, and you may never draw above 10. If you have an effect which would cause you to draw above 10, then draw only as many as you can. However, if you begin your turn with 10 cards in hand, then you cannot take the take a card action. You must take the play a set action. When you play a set, this represents going out on an expedition. And when you do this, you choose the cards from your hand who will be joining you on the expedition team. Play any number of cards from your hand into a face up set in front of yourself, as long as all of the cards are either of the same color or of the same role. Here for example I could do a three card blue set or a four card botanist set. The minimum size for an expedition is one card. Having chosen your set, you now choose one of the cards within that set to be the expedition leader. This choice is important because the role and the color of the expedition leader 
are the ones which we'll score for this set. To resolve the colour, go to the matching coloured location board, find your marker, and then find the size threshold over the next step of movement. As long as this expedition is at least that size, then advance your marker exactly one step. Now that white is here, the next step of orange movement will have to be from a set of at least two cards. It is legal to play a smaller set, it just means you won't advance your marker. The points showing in your location will be what you score at the end of the season for this vehicle. You may also resolve the leader's role. The leader's role might be resolved now in an active way, or it might have some sort of passive ability which resolves at a different stage of the game. We'll explain how all these work later, and the colour and role abilities can be resolved in either order. You'll keep all of your played sets for the season in front of yourself, and they'll all score points at the end of the season based on their size. Finally, take all the cards you had remaining in hand, and add them to the face-up supply of cards ready for all players to take on future turns. The season ends immediately when the third monkey card has been drawn. Score all end of season points indicated by the white stars. That means the points for your vehicle's space on each of the six location boards, points for each of your played sets based on its size, and note that single card sets score nothing, and any special points from specific roll cards. Now move on to the next season. Gather up all played and unplayed cards, set up the deck and cards exactly the way you did in the first season, leave all vehicles where they are on the location tracks, and then start the new season with the player who drew the third monkey last season taking the first turn. After the final season is done, whoever has the most points wins. In the event of a tie, whoever has the single largest expedition in the final season breaks the tie. If still tied, check your second largest expedition, then third, and so on. If still tied, victory is shared. Now we'll go through the roles, beginning with the recommended starter set. The guide helps you advance more efficiently on the location tracks by reducing the threshold value by one. Here, White could use this three card set to advance this threshold four step. It's still a size three set for end of round scoring. The photographer increases the size of a set for end of round scoring, so this would count as a four size set. But it does not help you with the threshold, so this set could not move White to the next step. With the pilot, you can choose to advance on any one of the location tracks rather than the one matching the pilot, as long as you meet the threshold. When you play a doctor set as part of a playing a set action, you don't have to return all of your cards to the table. Instead, you can keep a number in your hand equal to the size of the doctor set, returning only the rest. When you use the botanist role, the botanist frame will start off to the side at the beginning of each season. The first player to lead an expedition with a botanist takes this frame, puts it over that set, and scores two immediate points. From now on, any time a player plays a botanist set which is the same size or larger than the one which currently has the frame, that set now takes the frame, and again scores two immediate points. You can do this whether you're taking the frame from another player, or from another one of your own sets. Whoever holds this at the end of the season gains another two points. Finally, if you lead with a student, you're not allowed to advance your marker on any colour track, even if you meet the threshold. This makes them a weak leader for the tracks, but the deck has 24 students rather than 12 of every other role, making them good for scoring larger, higher scoring sets. Now we'll go through the other roles. If you lead with a cartographer, and you advance your vehicle with that cartographer's set, then you may play and fully resolve another set from your hand before returning any leftover cards from your hand to the table. If you play a patron set, then 
after returning leftover cards from your hand to the table, draw a number of cards into your hand from the deck equal to the expedition size. All of the mercenary cards are coloured black. They don't match any of the colours in the game and you're not allowed to play them as leaders under any circumstance. You can play mercenaries as wild into any set, increasing its size which can help you with advancing on the tracks or getting more value out of some leader powers. However, when the season ends, all of your mercenaries go away and it's only the cards that remain that will count towards this end of round scoring. If you use the professors, then in season setup, you'll lay the six professor tokens on the table. When you play a professor set, take any one professor token equal or lesser than the size of your set, if possible. At the end of a season, add up your professor points. Whoever has the most or equal most gets one free advancement on a track of their choice. Whoever has the fewest or equal fewest must choose one track and move one step backwards. If you use the linguist, you'll use the linguist board, placing each player's vehicle at zero in setup. Anytime you play a linguist set, advance your marker along the track equal to the set size. Each time you reach or pass an artifact, get a free advancement on any location track of your choice, and the player or players who lead this track at the end of the season gain two points. Finally, if you play with the curator, each player will get a museum board and a set of relics to start the game. Anytime you lead a set with a curator, take its matching coloured relic and add it to your museum. You have only one of each colour, so you'll want to play different colours of curator through the game. At the end of the game only, which is indicated by the gold star, score points based on how many artefacts you've collected. Finally, we'll look at the advanced side of the location boards. Red is not worth very many points, but after advancing through a threshold and returning all cards from your hand to the table, you now draw the number of cards from the deck shown on the space. On the purple board, you don't score at the end of the season. Instead, after making an advancement, and only immediately after making an advancement, you can choose to return to the start of the track to immediately score the points shown. If you're left out on the track at the end of the game, any potential points there are wasted. The green track is short, and at the end of each season, the player or players in the lead return to the start of the track and gain three bonus points. On the blue track, you want to take the expedition alone. If you are alone on your space at the end of the season, you gain the higher number of points. But if you share a space, each player gets the lower number. On the orange track, each player begins with two vehicles instead of one. And when you play your expedition, you can choose which of your vehicles you wish to move. At the end of the season, only your rear more vehicle will score. Finally, with the advanced pink track, the season does not end immediately when the final monkey card is drawn. Instead, in turn order, each player has one last special turn in which they may play an expedition up to the maximum size shown in that player's space. The track's not worth as many points, but it lets you be a little less fearful of the abrupt ending to the game. And that's how to play Archaeos Society. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Everything you do will help us. Every single view, every time you like our videos, our Instagram, every single comment, and let us know that you are doing something fun today. See you next time.